Hi, welcome to Blaze Cooks. I'm Blaze. Today we're going to make lasagna because my girls want it tonight. I kind of think it's a little ordinary for one of these videos because so many people do videos of lasagna. You can find a lot of recipes, but they want it, so I'm going to make it for them and I'm going to show you how to make it. So I'm just going to slice these and uh, dice these onions. And then we're going to get some garlic ready. And you just smash the whole clove and shake off the papery cover. Remember though, if you need a whole clove of garlic, don't smash it. Sometimes recipes want you to put a whole clove of garlic, saute that in oil, or throw that into something that you're going to remove after the fact. If you smash it by accident, again, it's not the end of the world. Now we're going to mix this in with a meatloaf mix. That's uh, a third pork, a third veal, and a third beef. Now I'm just going to drop the garlic and onions in that, excuse me, and I'm just going to give that a stir. While that's sauteing, I'm going to get my package of meatloaf mix and break it up and we're going to drop it right on top of the uh, sauteed onions and garlic because it's ready. So, I just dropped that on. I got my saw here. I'm going to load it up. I'm kind of moving quickly because I don't want my onions or garlic to burn because that makes your food very bitter. We're just going to do this. Get the saw out of the way of my steam. Until it looks like nice, crumbled ground meat. Fried, brown, ground meat. So I'm going to put in two pounds of where I got the cheese. And I don't have to measure with cups, and it, it keeps things clean. I, I absolutely love using the scale. And I estimated four ounces of the uh, park skim mozzarella just by eyeing it up where I cut it. And I'm going to do the same with the uh, whole milk mozzarella. I'm using uh, four ounces of each. We're going to throw in some salt, okay, and some black pepper, my, my favorite ingredient. I think this is just about every cook's favorite ingredient, black pepper and salt is a close second. See that? I use a lot now. <laughs> it's risky with my girls. They go, Daddy, it's spicy. But um, that'll have to do for them. I want to easily lower my lasagna shells in here, one by one. I don't want them sticking. And notice I'm using a very big pot. On this, we're going to lay down all our lasagna noodles. One other thing, of course, we can't forget is my sauce. I got some homemade tomato sauce here. And I'm just going to pop it in here and defrost it. It's going to take about as long as the noodles will take to, to boil, come out of the pot, and dry out. I've discovered another use for these, these silicone gloves. Boy, I really like these. I'm just reaching into the pot and I'm just pulling these out. And since they're pretty wet, I can, I can sort of layer them on top of each other temporarily without fear of them sort of sticking together. And then I can just dispose of that pot and focus on separating the noodles. So first I'm going to just put down a little sauce on the bottom of the dish. And pan, of course, is a perfect length for three pastas, three lasagna shells. And you're supposed to overlap it a little bit. I didn't do it on that one, but that's okay. I'll try to do it now. Now we're gonna put down the the cheese, and I have to be honest, I've always struggled with this. I end up just kind of putting the lobs down. This is about the best you can do. Now some recipes make this a little thinner. Sometimes the regatta they use is, is thinner. Or not, not thinner, creamier. I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons of this down. And remember, this is salty chip, Pecorino Romano cheese. It's salty, so you don't want to get carried away. And remember, less is more. You always want to kind of, if, if you're in doubt, put less of anything in something because uh, first of all we don't want to run out when we get to the top layers and uh, a lot of times you'll overdo it uh, with, you know with too much of, of a particular ingredient and I kind of just mash it down as it cooks it's gonna it's, it will level out somewhat but I, I, I press it to I press it down to spread it out and I'm gonna do I'm going to alternate between the meat and the cheese. And here's my meat in the bowl. I, got, I think I got enough, enough meat for a, a couple layers. 
I'm not going to put grated cheese on that level, on that layer. I'm going to press this down a little bit. My hand should be, I should wet my hands a tad, but I forgot to. And then I'm just going to drizzle a little sauce down each one. I guess I should do it towards the camera. Sorry about that, folks. And we'll sprinkle a little more of this on top. See why I added some salt to the meat and a little salt to the ordigata mixture, but I didn't really have to consider the salt too much because I knew that one of the key ingredients is Pecorino Romano. Also, I didn't mention to cover it with foil. You're going to take the foil off uh, last five minutes just around the top and put it in the oven, middle rack. And I think earlier I said 350 degrees, make it 375, and bake it for approximately 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Take a peek at it, see if it's starting to bubble around the edges. If it is, it's in good shape, take the foil off and leave it in the oven for another uh, 5, 10 minutes of browning. You could put it under the broiler, but you got to be careful because you can make the pasta on the top crunchy and that's no good. I've checked the lasagna, forget the background noise, my girls are watching TV now. And as you can see, I'm not sure if with this camera you're going to be able to see the bubbling. It's very hard to get it focused on this. You know what? I'm going to call it ready. Remember I said less is more? I'm going to take the foil off and we're just going to slide that baby back in. And another 5-10 minutes. And I can't cut it for you right now folks. But uh, it's a little too hot, you have to let it cool. But there you go, a classic, classic lasagna. Looks like it, and I'm sure it's going to taste like it. I hope you tried sometime. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer it. And until then, I'll see you next time. Remember, great gloves for the hot oven.